This video is going to be on respiratory acidosis, which means that less carbon dioxide is being exhaled from the lungs. So we identify this with a blood gas analysis as an increased partial pressure of carbon dioxide or increased PCO2. So I'm going to draw an outline of horse and also some anatomical features of this horse um, which includes the upper airway, so the trachea, the oral cavity, which of course goes to the lungs, and the lungs are surrounded by a dead space, which is the pleural cavity, and that pleural cavity is supported by respiratory muscles, and I've drawn the diaphragm here to represent the respiratory muscles, but that certainly includes the intercostal muscles as well. And then finally, uh, the respiratory center, which is in the medulla of the brain. So I'll use these anatomic structures to better um, explain how a respiratory acidosis can occur. So first of all, there can be depression of the respiratory center. And that respiratory center then tells um, the lungs to have uh, less frequent breaths, so bradypnea and causes of depression of this respiratory center in the brain includes various drugs, particularly, particularly the anesthetic drugs, um, also CNS diseases, primary CNS diseases that involves the medulla, and a primary metabolic alkalosis. And you'll learn more about metabolic alkalosis in a subsequent video. So now going over to upper airway obstruction, um, so another cause would be if the upper airway were, of course, obstructed, which would prevent carbon dioxide from leaving the trachea or leaving the lower lungs. At the same time, there would also be decreased oxygen getting to the lungs, which would potentially cause hypoxemia. So um, this could be a foreign body that's uh, stuck within the upper airway, or it could be seen with some breed predisposition. So with the brachycephalic breeds, they, have, they are known to have smaller tracheas or an elongated soft palate, which could cause a physiologic or um, a physical up, upper airway obstruction. Um, so next, going over to the lungs, there's actually two um, different sources for lungs causing uh, respiratory acidosis. Um, and the first is alveolar disease, and the second is vascular disease, either within the lungs or originating from the heart. So really, I'm representing lungs here, but what I really mean is the cardiopulmonary system. So I'm going to draw a alveolus on the left and its blood supply, the capillary that delivers uh, carbon dioxide to the alveus, alveolus to be exhaled, as well as the same blood vessel would then absorb oxygen to be delivered to the tissues, but I'm not going to draw that. So if there was a respiratory acidosis, the less carbon dioxide is diffusing from the blood into the alveolus to be exhaled. Um, so this can occur when there's something within the alveolus that's not supposed to be there. And that can be a, a, a various numbers of things. So it could be a neoplastic cell, for example, so a pulmonary carcinoma or some sort of metastatic disease that's effacing of alveoli. Or it could be an inflammatory cell type, so a pneumonia perhaps. Um, edema, so water within the alveoli could cause decreased diffusion of gas or uh, pulmonary fibrosis, and I've drawn a fibroblast to kind of represent fibrosis. So again, those disease processes are inflammation, pneumonia, some sort of neoplasia, edema, and fibrosis within the alveoli. So then for vascular disease, um, that can be uh, two separate things. First, there could be a thrombus within the blood vessels, which is inhibiting blood flow to the alveolus, so there's decreased gas exchange again. So I've drawn some platelets within this blood vessel to kind of represent pulmonary thromboemboli. And then the second cause for vascular disease could be a right-to-left shunt. 
So the blood is bypassing the alveolus, and so you get venous blood going straight to um, arteriolar blood without it being oxygenated by a functioning alveolus. So that would be right to left shunting. Um, okay, so now going down to the pleural cavity. So you can get a respiratory acidosis whenever there is something within the pleural cavity that's not supposed to be there. So again, this is a dead space. There is very um, minute. So if there's expansion of the pleural cavity with any substance, which would include inflammatory cells, so pleuritis, blood with hemothorax, air with pneumothorax, or some sort of organs like liver or GI with a hernia, then that essentially expands that pleural cavity and it compresses the lungs so the lungs can't expand and um, relax like they normally should to allow for, for gas exchange. Um, so finally, respiratory muscles. Um, you can get a respiratory acidosis if there's paralysis of those muscles, so paralysis of the diaphragm, paralysis of the intercostal muscles. But this is something that we don't really diagnose with ClinPath data. You really need um, physical exam findings and history to identify this. So I'm really not going to emphasize paralysis of respiratory muscles in this class. So um, those are the, the main causes of respiratory acidosis. Um, there's upper airway obstruction, cardiopulmonary disease, pleural disease, depression of the respiratory center, and then also respiratory muscle paralysis.